Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out the Antec 1 aimed at entry level builders with an attractive price of $59. Now it offers the basics that is all you need when starting on a new build, so let's find out if this one has the edge when it comes to budget builds. And starting with the size, this is one of the smallest mid towers that we've looked at. So this is an advantage if you are thinking of a compact build, but there's plenty of compromises because of this, which we'll point out later. Now you are looking at a standard steel and plastic construction with a decent build quality for such a value chassis. The front panel includes your power and reset buttons, two USB 3 ports with the USB 2 adapter and colored audio jacks. Right below are the three optical bays and of course the front intake area. The panel is removable but unfortunately we neither have the dust filter nor the intake fan and this case only supports the 120mm fan. The top panel includes the exhaust fan, sort of has been a staple for Antec and we get an extra 120mm fan port on the side panel. At the back we have the exhaust, IO area, 7 PCI slots, a little venting with water cooling holes and a bottom mounted power supply that you can only install in one direction. Now, unfortunately the PCI brackets are not reusable but even for a value case I feel they should be included. What is good news is the removable dust filter at the bottom, it's great to see this on such a budget product. The Antec 1 has pre-installed case feet that slightly elevate the chassis but because the steel frame is quite thin the case might not be properly leveled so wobbling may be of an issue. And getting inside we have the tools mounting for the optical drives and the hard drive cage below with this unusual honeycomb design that allows for ventilation on the drives. Then we have this oversized CPU cutout along with the cable management cutouts around the motherboard tray. The two fans included are the top and rear exhaust and I definitely recommend installing that front intake for improved airflow. Also an optional fan intake can be installed at the bottom but keep in mind the length of your power supply must not exceed 150mm for the fan to have clearance. Also notice the lack of a dust filter on every intake so be prepared for routine interior cleaning. And coming to the back, notice the lack of the 8 pin cable cutout meaning you'll have to route the 8 pin cable underneath the motherboard. Now we do have some cable tie notches to help with organization of your wiring and check out this rubber bit, it's supposed to provide that necessary spacing between the panel and the motherboard tray. It actually came in very useful during assembly. Now I really wish Antic widened the case just a tab as there's practically no room for wiring so good luck to you beginners. The 3.5 inch drives are mounted using two brackets and are quite secure when installed and the cage supports a total of 5 3.5 inch drives along with two SSDs, one of which is installed at the bottom of the cage and the other at the top. So moving on with the assembly, here you can get an idea of how this compact size is a major disadvantage. The top of the motherboard practically touches the top exhaust fan, so clearance issues with CPU towers may arise for many. Also routing that 8 pin CPU cable from behind the motherboard is possible, but you must pass the cable through before installation of your motherboard. Now this is a budget tower, so gamers likely won't be installing ultra expensive 12 inch graphics card. So we only have 10.5 inches of clearance for your GPU. But also keep in mind that graphics cards are actually getting smaller yet more powerful. And there's a ton of options on the market today that are compatible with smaller cases like this one. So everything wired up, it's a pretty tiny case to work in. Using the hard drive cage to store cables will come in handy but it's quite difficult to clean up all that mess at the front of your power supply. That will definitely have a toll on airflow. And so to wrap it up, the Antec 1 chassis is an option for budget builders as it hits the shelf at an attractive price and a compact size. For entry level builders, this will do the job with plenty of drive storage and a decent amount of airflow options. However, I feel the compact size brings in heavy compromises with cable management that will clog up the airflow. And I wish the case was 1 inch larger in every direction that will allow that 8 pin CPU connector to be routed properly and having only 10.5 inches of clearance for the graphics card is limiting. Also not having any dust filters is a major drawback and incorporation of such features sets you apart from the competition. 
So the Antec 1 is entering a heavily saturated market for value chassis. It offers the basics and perhaps that is all you need for your build. But if you are planning on beefing up your entry level gaming rig down the road, it's not a bad idea to explore your options by looking at competitors and Antec themselves. So thanks guys for watching, let us know what you think about the Antec 1, leave the comments down below and we'll see you in the next one.